Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. There's a number of different ways to collect. You can collect just Federal Reserve notes. You can collect modern notes. You can collect obsolete bank notes. You can collect military payments. You can collect uh, World War II emergency currencies. You can collect any and all of the above. You can do typesets where you're trying to get one of everything, like me. <laughs> but one of the other things that should be known to you is especially with older currency. And I'm going way back older, not talking about circulation fines. Um, it, it's a word that we're not supposed to say, which is counterfeit. When you're looking at coins, the number of counterfeit coins that are out there is incredible. I, I, I would never start coin collecting with all the coins that are, all the videos I'm seeing about counterfeit coins. I would never be stacking silver and gold when people are talking about those bars being fake. Um, the amount of money that you will have to spend to verify <laughs> that your gold or silver is real nullifies the effect of saving it in the first place. But you don't hear about that with paper money. When was the last time you had a counterfeit? Have you ever had a counterfeit? That's the thing. It's, it's almost non-existent. I don't know if, if there is a different fine or punishment regarding counterfeiting paper money compared to counterfeiting coinage, but you don't see China flooding the market with fake $1 bills, but you see all kinds of fake silver. You know, So, I mean, I, I don't get it. There, there is that security issue, okay? But that wasn't always the case with paper money. In fact, counterfeiting paper money was actually a way that we fought wars. <laughs> the the Union government counterfeited the Confederate States of America's money and flooded the market to cause hyperinflation. Obsolete banks. There were so many different obsolete banks. Obsolete banks would print their own money. And this was all before the Federal Reserve was was a thing. Uh, there, the government didn't print paper money. So if you needed paper money, if you needed vast amounts of money, you were either going to carry around big old bags of silver or you had to get money from banks that printed their own. The problem is people didn't know what banks were still around. So they didn't know if the banks were good or not. So the further you got from a bank, the less their, their money was actually worth because people couldn't verify it. And because there were so many banks, it was actually easier to make counterfeit money. All of that is part of the reason why the government stepped in to make paper money, uh, because that is how you know that this is real. And like I said, when do you ever find fakes? Does it happen? Oh, sure. But I have to hunt out counterfeits. I've never run across one. I'm, I'm sure there have been counterfeit hundreds you know, I'm sure somebody's found a counterfeit hundred here or there. But the, the whole point is that you don't see people faking um, high-end paper money. Like they are faking high-end coins. Which means that collecting counterfeits is a whole nother area for collecting paper money. All right. Here's my thousand. Let's take a look at what I found. These are the last notes that I brought back from Vegas, finally getting through them all. Uh, let's see. These notes here came from uh, the Mirage, which is now closed. Uh, Caesars, the Cromwell, Flamingo, Link, Harris, Paris, the California, and one strap came from the bank. All right, so let's see what we got. Somebody did some neat artwork on George. Drew a skull on his face. That's pretty impressive. Uh, here is a note where the six is heavily inked. So what? Uh, there was a lot of notes that had heavy ink on one particular digit. This was the first one I saw. I pulled it. I then saw a bunch more and said, you know, I'm just going to pull the one and make sure to remind everybody that when you see stuff like that, it's not an error. I, I guess technically it's a mistake, which would be an error, but it's not rare. So it has no additional value. Um, so yeah, 
I mean, if you want to show me your spelling test from third grade where you were given 20 words and had one word spelt wrong, that's an error, but it's not worth anything. All right. So anyway, that's that. This one was kind of neat because there's the uh, over-inking on the top here. And is that an error? Once again, that's a mistake. Is it worth anything? Probably not. I mean, you're talking just a bunch of little dots. What are you going to say that's worth? Five bucks? What's it going to cost to ship it? Five bucks? Okay. So, in other words, the shipping cost, it costs more to ship it than, than you're saying what the note is worth. Then, no, don't bother. Don't bother selling it. Don't bother buying it. Just keep your eyes open and you'll run across one. Is it neat to have in the collection? Sure. Is it worth anything? No. But fun to collect, so I'm going to save it. Uh, here's an alternator. You have sevens as the alternator. Seven, four, seven, two, seven, four, seven, eight. Too bad that eight wasn't a two, but once again, if it's close to being worth, uh, if it's close to being worth a fancy, or if it's close to being a fancy serial number, that means it's close to being worth money, but it's not. This is a rotator and a trinary, zeros, sixes, and nines. It's a rotator because zero, when you turn it upside down, is still zero. Six and nine, when you turn them upside down, are still six and nine. So these are the only digits that form uh, rotators. A true rotator, the entire note would read the same upside down. But this one is zero, six, six to start with. So as we turn it upside down, it's now nine, nine, nine. So it's clearly not the same number upside down. So it's a rotator, but not a true rotator. True rotators, those could be those could be worth some money. Uh, got another trinary, ones, threes, and sevens, zeros, twos, and eights. Ones, sevens, and eights. And this one's got wedding transfer. Ooh, another thing that's worth a million dollars. No, not at all. Most of your wedding transfers, you only see them on newer bills because since the ink wasn't pressed there was no pressure involved here. It was literally wet ink and the bill being placed on it. Uh, there's there's nothing really holding that on there. I'm not saying that you can scratch it off, but I'm saying over time those do wear off pretty quick, and that's why you only see it on new bills. So don't spend extra money on something that's going to eventually fall off your note. Uh, quads. This is quad ones. Quad twos with a fifth. Quad fours with a fifth. This has one, two, three, four, five threes. And some stars. 2021 star. Always checking to make sure they're not filled. 2017 crisp star note. 2017 crisp note as well. Another 2017 star. Another 2017 star. 2017. 2013. And then the older notes, 2003A, not too good a shape. Another 2003A, also not the greatest. Another 2003A, 2003A, 2003, a little bit better shape. 2001, hard note to find, 1999. Look at that. The prefix went to U. That means that they printed 100 million notes and then they went to B. And printed 100 million notes and went to C and then D and then E. Every single one of them letters represents another 100 million notes printed. 1999, 1995, not a web note. Another 95 from Minneapolis. That's always good to see. Does have this extra line here. Not a printing error. No, that is a teller strap, uh, teller stamp. When they stamped the strap, like right here, and then they missed. Part of the circle went there. Not an error, not worth anything. 1988A, not a web note. And another 1988A, not in the greatest of shape. Okay, so that's what I found this week. What did I pull? I pulled a counterfeit. This is a $1 Merchants Bank counterfeit from Providence, Rhode Island. And it is clearly stamped uh, counterfeit. And I tried to make out what was here. And it's also stamped on the back. Right here, bank. And it says counterfeit. And I think that's C-O-M-M-E-R. I think it's commercial bank. And then this looks like P-R-O-V, period. So commercial bank proof, proven something to that effect anyway one dollar note now if i take this out of here probably shouldn't but it is very thin that's not what makes it counterfeit 
Uh, it's like tissue paper thin, but a lot of these notes were that way. Uh, it's surprising when you get one of these notes and see how thin it was. And because of that, it's amazing that any of these notes, whether they be real or counterfeit, uh, it's amazing that they still exist. How do you print on a note that fine? Now, as we look in here, this does look fairly intricate, uh, but it's not perfect, okay? These really close lines, those swirl patterns should be a little bit more clear. When you look at the pictures themselves, the pictures do start to break up just a little bit. Um, this one isn't terrible. It's actually a pretty good counterfeit because when you're looking at the individual things on there, they're okay. I mean, they're not they're not perfect, but they're pretty good. The signatures, if you were to look at them nowadays, it's a little easier because you don't see. Um, with the ink that they normally used, you'll see a browning. It's, it's basically the iron and the ink starting to rust a little bit. So you'll see that, not in all notes, but in a lot of notes. And uh, there's, once again, nothing on the back of this one. There's just a couple little bits of writing on there and the stamp saying that it's counterfeit. Well, how do I know it's counterfeit? <laughs> That's the thing. Because looking at this note, like I said, overall, it's pretty good. January 4th. 1st, 1859. That's pretty cool. But once again, proving that it's counterfeit. Well, aside from it being stamped counterfeit, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll pretend it's not stamped counterfeit. So how am I supposed to know? Well, Don Kelly put out a book of obsolete currency. Okay, and that's pretty much what it's called. Obsolete Paper Money, A Guide with Prices by Don Kelly. And this book is organized by state. So... I looked up Providence, Rhode Island, because that's what this is. Once again, let's look. Providence, uh, Merchants Bank, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, let's see. So that's the important stuff that we need to know. I'm just trying to read all this different stuff here. Sit that way. There's Rhode Island. Just to make sure. Okay. State of Rhode Island. Providence. And it says Merchants Bank. Well, that makes it easy because Rhode Island has a huge section on Providence. Okay. And let's just see here. Here's North Providence, Providence, Providence. Here, here. Providence, Merchants Bank. You know, so here, all of that. Providence, Providence. So that's all about Providence, Rhode Island, and all the different banknotes. The thing is, is I know this is the Merchants Bank, and I saw Merchants Bank back here. So Providence Merchants Bank, and I'm pretty sure it starts on this page here, Providence Merchants Bank. So let's look. I have a $1 bill from the Providence Merchants Bank. That's mechanics. So then we're going to go here, merchants. Here's the note. So let's look for a $1 bill with this dude here and a lady center, okay? Merchants. Looking for a one that has a guy and a girl. Okay. Ugh, turn the page. All right, here we go. What do we got here? There's a guy. Oh, but that's a $3 bill, so that's not it. Uh, Mount Vernon Bank. Okay, so that takes care of all the merchants' banks. Now we can go through all the others just to see if there's any note at all that has the guy and the girl. And guess what? There isn't one. In a book this thick, with this many different notes per page. This note doesn't exist. Why? Because it's counterfeit. That's why. It's from a bank that never existed. It's simply a bunch of smaller plates put together to make fake money. It's not a real note. There is no, there is a merchant's bank, but this is not what the $1 merchant's bank note looked like. So somebody could print as many of these as they want, and as long as they drift a little bit further away from the actual merchant's bank, people wouldn't know it and they'd be able to spend it. So yeah, it's counterfeit. 
As far as I know, these are legal to own. <laughs> some of, some obsolete currencies are only available in counterfeits because all of the originals were turned in. So there's that as well. All right, guys, if you learned anything new, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.